Hi boys, welcome back to the channel YouTube. I'm Navy Dad. This is Rusty Bolt's Garage and well, I, it, it's winter. That. So this is kind of a interesting episode. Uh, I've been off for a little while because you know we have Christmas and and the wife and son got Omarona, <laughs> or we think they did. We never could get tested because we never could get freaking test. Imagine that. Thanks, Sleepy Joe. So we sequestered for a while. I never got it. Never had any signs. They didn't get very sick. We think it was maybe just the flu. Who knows? Anyway, so I'm back at it. But some things have occurred that are both sad but good let me explain it well merry christmas y'all yep old blues guys hood up we're waiting on the christmas flatbed yeah merry christmas you see the little 4.3 is dead a lot earlier than I had planned on. Poor little guy. He did his job though, he got me home. Kind of an interesting story. Christmas Eve story. Let me tell you. What, I always have a story. Then I'll show you what's going to replace the little 4.3. <laughs> it ain't no LS. So what happened was, this right here. That's right, Christmas Eve. I'm perusing, I was off that week, I'm perusing through pick and pull list and I found a 99 Firebird that had just been put on at the Fort Worth pick and pull. And I'm like, I need the back brakes off that thing. I'm sure they're still there because it's only been posted up there for like three days. So get up Friday morning and I make a mad bomber run all the way out to Fort Worth. So from where I live to the Fort Worth pick and pull is about 115 miles round trip. And I hauled ass out there because they closed early. It was Christmas Eve. And we had family things to do Christmas Eve. So I made a mad bomber run out there. I ran out there 85 miles an hour all the way. 85 miles an hour all the way back. Truck ran like a jewel. Yes, I was pegged the speedometer. I mean, you know, most of the whole trip out there is on express route, which is 75 miles an hour. And nobody goes 75 miles an hour on an express road in Texas. Come on. <laughs> that's, like, that's like an unlimited speed. Not really, don't tell the DPS. But, got home, there's a gas station about three blocks from here. Pulled into the gas station to fill her up. Wouldn't start again. Dead. Nada. I uh, basically had a crank, no start situation. I'm like, what the freaking hell? So, nothing. Everything I tried, nothing. So I called a wrecker. Try to get a wrecker on Christmas Eve. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's not real easy. So I sat there for two and a half hours because I was not going to leave it there. And I didn't want anything to happen to it. So I waited. Finally got, you know, got the truck back here and you know, and, and I didn't mess with it for another week. But here's the interesting thing. The truck should not have been running. <laughs> not the way it was that day. So it ran like a jewel. I mean really, just smooth as could be. Nice cool temperatures, excellent oil pressure, everything working perfectly. And well I knew it was an overheating issue because I got a freaking 2500 radiator in the damn thing. I found three burnt spark plug wires that, uh, on the driver's side that kind of slipped back down and basically melted. I mean they weren't arcing but the, the uh, well here's a picture. So okay, started looking a little bit deeper. I've got no power to the fuel injectors. Hmm, okay, well that could be a couple things. Is it no power to the injectors or no fuel? Test the fuel pump. Now I replaced the whole gas tank and the fuel pump uh, in 2018. So I pretty much knew that wasn't going to be it. And sure enough, it wasn't. Fuel pump's working fine, pumping lots of fuel out. So then, like, okay, there's no power to the injectors. Um, hmm. Ignition module. Well, it's pulled it out. It's the original AC Delco unit. Or um, truck has almost 218,000 miles on it. Swap that in. Put in a new distributor cap and rotor just to make sure. Nothing. The hell's going on? The coil is not that old either. So I looked at the back of the throttle body and noticed that the uh, fuel pressure regulator is leaking like a sieve. <sighs> fuel pressure regulator leaking like a sieve. Throttle position sensor was cracked and slid over. In fact, I don't even know how the heck it was idling, but it ran like a top the whole way. 
And that's actually not very old. I replaced that when I did the tank. So I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Pull that out, go ahead and go up and get a new kit, throw it in there, um, put in the ignition module, a new distributor cap and rotor, and new plug wires. Nothing. Crank, no start. What the freaking hell is going on? Still nothing. No power to the injectors. Ugh. I should have been listening to my buddy up at Advanced Auto Rileys. He said, it's the distributor. I'm like, oh, come on, man. It can't be that. Just, it was working perfectly, and then it wasn't. He goes, it's the distributor. Mm, okay. So nice guys that they are because I'm up there all the time. That's why I call it Advanced Auto Rileys. I can tell you who it is because generally auto parts stores don't take electrical parts back. But they did. And I went ahead and bought the distributor. Put it in. Test. Boom. I've got fuel going to the injectors again. There's power there. But still, no start. I'm like, what the freaking hell? Pull out a spark plug, check it. It's got spark. Okay, what the hell? You got spark, you got fuel. Why isn't it starting? Well, there's a third thing that's required to do that. So I'm like, okay, let's look at this a little further. So, did it jump timing? Pull up, top dead center, check it. No, spot on. What the freaking hell is going on here? No compression on the passenger side. It just let go. What the hell? No water in the fuel, but no compression. So I can't figure out exactly, shit, damn, bucket fly. I can't figure out exactly what happened. And I haven't looked at it any further, and at this point, don't care. I don't want to waste any more money on a six cylinder, and you know, almost 30 years old, and has 200, almost 220,000 miles on it. It's not worth it. But this is a lot earlier then I wanted to uh, look at doing an engine swap. It's a mosquito, Jesus, freaking January. And so what do I do? I was just about ready to deep dive into the Chevelle and start it, get all the suspension done, brakes, get the big block in it, get the four speed in it, get the interior in it. And I need the truck to do some of that stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, uh, I'm gonna have to temporarily store the, the Chevelle for a while while I do this. And so I started um, looking around trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to put in here? Because like I said early on, if you've been watching, I had planned a different type of build for this. I mean, everybody does an LS, right, in, a, in, a, in these trucks. In fact, I'll put some links down below to some of the people that I follow that I think have done a really good job uh, showing how to, to install LS motors uh, into OBS trucks. And that's not what I'm going to do. That's not what my original plan was. And I've been researching for over a year to, to do this, and it became really cost prohibitive to be able to do it. But a lot of people tried to guess in the comments and stuff, but y'all totally missed it. It's been right above my head the whole time. <laughs> That's right. I wanted to put an LC3 in this truck. Don't know what that is? Well, Google it real quick. Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> So the LC3 is a 4.4 liter supercharged Cadillac North Star. But actuality, it's not a North Star, it's an Aurora. So me personally, I think the North Star is one of the most unappreciated and misunderstood engines ever. I mean, it's a two-piece block, sure, that's part of its problem, it leaks like a sieve. But the aftermarket has solutioned that. I mean, ARP has um, uh, redesigned bolts and everything for the head gasket failure problem because the bolts slide out. All of that's fixable. It's a two-piece block, people. What's a two-piece block good for? Boost. That's right. I, again, I think it's a very underappreciated engine. And the if you read your history on the North Star, you know that you know it was in collaboration with Oldsmobile and the Aurora V8. And of course, IndyCar ran Aurora V8s back in the 90s. And come on, Aurora. What a cool name, right? I mean, this is freaking cool. The original Oldsmobile Aurora was a good looking car. It had one major problem though, it was front wheel drive. <laughs> they made that a rear wheel drive car. I think Oldsmobile might still be around today. Maybe, probably not. But that was my plan, is to get the LC3. So the LC3 was in Cadillac STSs, uh, the STSV. A lot of people think I was in LS. No, <laughs> it was not. The LS was in the CTS. Why Cadillac built these two platforms together, I, I don't understand. I mean, it didn't sell very well. Um, the LS was a lot 
faster, more horsepower, you could do more things to it. I mean, the only thing I can think of is they were trying to compete with 5 Series BMW, but what the hell? I mean, <laughs> who was running the show at that time? <laughs> that makes no sense. Uh, and then also it was in the Cadillac XLRV. Now, uh, you forget about trying to find one of those or find an engine out of there, but the STS, like finding a wrecked car at Copart, that's actually not that bad. You have to hunt around, but you can find them, and you can find them fairly inexpensively. I found a couple of them for under $3,000. The whole car, physically drivable, you know, like one that had been rear-ended, another one that had been sideswiped real bad. And you almost need the whole car because you need wiring harness, you need computers and everything else. Uh, it's a very complicated engine uh, and a complicated transmission, but it would fit in there. Remember that this is a rear-drive car. It is not front-drive, so the engine is built to be in a rear-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, I did measurements and things like that, and it would fit. I'd have to have some custom-made motor mounts, and I found a guy um, here locally who does LS uh, wiring. You send him your harness, and I kind of pinged him. We went back and forth about a year and a half ago, I think it was, and I said, you know, is this something you could help me? He goes, yeah, it's just a GM computer. We, we could do that. I could, I could probably build a wiring harness for you, but it's probably going to be five, six, seven hundred dollars maybe, maybe a little bit more since I've never done it before. I'm like, okay, I can understand that. Then... Just the complicatedness, I was probably looking at somewhere around $5,000 to do this swap. And that's just cost prohibitive for me. I mean, it would have been a blast to do it on the channel. You know, these motors can make a lot of power and there is aftermarket support. There's headers and things like that for, uh, for the CTSs and, uh, and the XLR. So it was a viable, but in the end, it just didn't work. So I had an LS. And I originally bought the LS to do it, uh, to put in the Chevelle, and then I'm like, it's a 70 Chevelle. It just doesn't deserve an LS. The platform is, is unbelievable. It's reliable. There's so much support for it. But in my personal opinion, there's only really one engine that can be in a 70 Chevelle, and that's a 454, which I have. 73 LS4, four bolt main truck motor. That's got an Edelbrock package in it so it's going to be a lot of fun it's right around 330 horsepower I think and it'll be fun in a car and like 445 on torque or something <laughs> uh, there's this you can't see it right here but well, I'll give you a picture of it that is a 390 rear end out of 69 GTO that, that I got from my buddy's uh, Dallas area Pontiac who also got it from another friend of ours that you may see doing some kind of coffee walk thing <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thanks Dennis, I, I got the rear end. <laughs> so, now, what am I going to stick in this thing? Well, again, I've been looking around. I actually have a, uh, I'm ashamed to say it, I actually have a built 305. I actually bought this a while ago for a different project, that never happened. And I was like, okay, I can stick that in the truck. It's a 305. I mean, it's got cam. It sounds really good. But it's a 305. I just can't do that. So I've been looking around, looking around, and two days ago, something popped up that I was like, holy crap, oh my God. So let me show you. Okay, so right now, what you need to do, and I can't play it because I'm sure that the uh, YouTube bot would snag it, but uh, you know the Space Jam movie or any cheerleader movie you've ever seen, you know, y'all get ready for this, ba ba ba, you know, that one. Oh, come on. Y'all are watching Cheer on Netflix with your significant other, I know you are. <laughs> so play that in your head right now. You ready? Here we go. Voila! <laughs> Folks, this is a 1994 Gen 5 454. Yeah. Oh, Blue's getting a big block. <laughs> I mean, I could put a small block in it, I could put an LS in it. Just wasn't possible to put the Cadillac in it. But I think this is the next best thing. Actually, this is probably better because I happened on the right, at the, it, this all happened at the right time. So I saw this a couple weeks ago and they wanted an astronomical amount of money for it, which I, I thought. It, probably think in big block terms, depending on what part of the country you're in, maybe not. But uh, they want $3,500 for the whole thing. Well, they lowered the price the other day uh, and I paid 1200 bucks for the whole thing. But here's the thing. This came out of a motorhome. It has 31,000 miles on it. The motorhome was damaged by a tornado years ago. And the gentleman I bought it from was actually going to use the engine 
to put in a Z28. Unfortunately, health problems, um, he can no longer work on cars, so. But anyway, this, this engine is so freaking clean. It's still shiny black. I mean, there is no, no leaks, no oil leaks from the valve cover gaskets, nothing from the front pan. Even the oil pan is clean. It has a little seepage from the rear main seal, but that'll be an easy fix. But transmission, 4L80. And I, I don't think you can see in the camera here, but it's bleeding all over the place. But it's nice pink transmission fluid, so it's very clean. Engine, super clean. Everything is, is just, uh, you know, they pulled it out. At, when they pulled it out, they fired it up uh, out of the truck, and, and it ran flawlessly. So no reason to think that uh, there's anything wrong with it. I'll probably go ahead and reseal it just because. And it's got the pink port heads, obviously. And But there's still a lot you can do with this. I, I don't really need to make a gigantic amount of horsepower. I believe the uh, motorhome engine made uh, 255 horsepower. Um, again, it's a 94, something like uh, right around 400 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, but I, I can't remember the actual number. So I may do a cam swap, I'm not sure. Still not sure if I'm going to go with uh, TBI or not, as you can see. That got broken off, that, the chain slipped on it and broke it. I have all the parts for it. I have the ECU. Um, I even have, this has got the heavy duty factory oil cooler on it. I've got the oil cooler. Um, so I have all that stuff. So um, we're gonna get started on, on uh, the uh, doing this here fairly, fairly quickly because I need to get that truck back on the road. But what I am gonna do is uh, I am going to get the mirror videos out first. Um, I'm almost done uh, with all that. Um, it got a little convoluted because I switched. Um, I was originally going to try and do the tow mirrors on there, but I'm sorry. <laughs> the truck just looks like freaking Dumbo on wheels with those mirrors. They're just too big. Well, still a little fitment left to do. Um, those are GMT 800 mirrors on a GMT 400. Probably overkill for this little truck. It would look great on a dually though, that's for dang sure. I went back to the standard um, GMT 800 mirrors and I've got, I had to rewire everything of course and, and get that done. So I'll probably do that maybe in three different episodes just to keep them short. So we'll, uh, got some research to do on whether I go carbureted and, and, uh, or not on this thing. And not exactly what I wanted to do, but it's the next best thing. <laughs> Oh, wait, yeah, my story. Yeah, I, like I said, I always have a story, right? Okay, so real quick, uh, about three weeks ago, I found something on Craigslist and I just had to go get it. Uh, I've been looking for different seats for Old Blue because I love the Pontiac seats. I mean, they are so comfortable. In fact, I'm going to convert them into office chairs. But the bolster hits me right here and it kind of pushes me forward and it's a little uncomfortable. And you really can't make any adjustments because we got the seats back all the way. But I've been looking for factory blue leather seats from the 90s on anything GM. I found them. I found an <laughs> Aurora. Yes, I found a set of blue leather Aurora seats from a 99 Aurora. And they are perfect. And I got them for $25. So how do you pass that up? And they'll bolt right on just exactly like the Pontiac seats. But here's something cool. The guy I bought them from, he was 87 years old. <laughs> Still works on his own stuff. Small little frail guy with a cane. He opens up his garage and he's got a 67 Chevelle in there that he's almost finished with. He's been working on the car for about five years himself. He's a car guy through and through. I mean, the, the car is beautiful. I should have taken pictures of it. I don't know why I didn't, but he's doing the work himself. And that is cool as shit. But there's hope for us older guys. <laughs> well, it's gonna drive my wife nuts, but I'm gonna be freaking 90 years old. I'm still gonna be working on this shit. And, uh, yeah, I'm not spring chicken. Um, <laughs> should I tell y'all? So, next up is Old Blue himself. I think the truck likes me. And if y'all don't think that vehicles have personality, you're wrong. They do. I rescued that truck. The, the original owner passed away and it went on to his nephew. He neglected it. It had been off the road for at least five years and it took me quite a while to get it, you know, inspectable again. But, I think the truck likes me because it saved it. I mean, hell, it was probably one step away from pick and pull itself. But on that trip back from Fort Worth, I mean, I tipped 90 miles an hour a couple of times. I mean, that speedo was buried. I was pushing him hard. He got me home. As I said, he should not have been running as good as he, he shouldn't have been running at all. <laughs> but he got me three blocks from home. 
turned him off. He said, that's it. I'm done. I did my job. I got you home on Christmas. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I have to settle for um, Chateau St. Michel uh, 2018 because my son took all my daggum beer. So y'all be good. We'll see you next time. There's a freaking bug in here. Good God. Where did mosquitoes come from? Jesus.